hopeful then that he anticipates ending expensive old school television practices like advertising upfronts and producing pilots for programs that may never air. Disney is also likely to reopen with less office space. He's also told two people that he anticipated the company having fewer employees. In other words, the place famous for its Imagineers is being reimagined. There's a reckoning like this in boardrooms across the world. Who will have a job? How will they do that job? Which projects and employees, even those that were untouchable before, are now expendable? We asked Stephen Kent, who covers media at Young Voices, to plot this line for us between Disney and then all the other companies. Stephen, really interesting stuff happening with Disney. Before we get into the mechanics of that, how much do you think it can be put as a, a proxy, as a stand-in for other corporations? Well, Disney is the unquestionable leader of the world of entertainment and mixed media. Um, you know, they are the tail that wags the rest of the dog. And what you see Disney do during the time of the coronavirus is going to be something that other companies and ine inevitably um, follow suit after. They are a trendsetter. With so many changes happening so rapidly at Disney, some things that in the past seemed untouchable, like an upfront or producing pilots. Um, what are the biggest things do you see changing and why? Well, the biggest thing is going to be people. Disney is going to find over the course of time that much of the, the uh, human capability that they have is not entirely necessary. It's gonna be legacy holdover um, talent. And they're gonna realize that a lot of the, the ships that they have to make things run uh, can keep going. Um, we are, are all very much attuned to the fact that automation is going to put people out of work in the long run in the 21st century, and we have to be ready for that. It's just kind of always been assumed that that's going to hit a lot of blue collar jobs, but that's just not true. Um, and you're gonna see this uh, hit the entertainment industry as well, the white collar industry, um, and Disney is gonna be one of the, the leading places of that bloodletting. When we hear Disney say they're coming back with probably less office space, to me that says more telework. And I wonder if that's going to become industry standard or even across the entire broadscape uh, of jobs in America. And also, you know, when you hear them say, we're not going to necessarily make a pilot just because it's the way we did before. That could be any number yeah. of industries that say we're not going to do things just because we did it that way in the past. Yeah, I mean, people's appetite for risk and investment always changes over time, right? Um, and I do think that it might be one of those pieces of silver lining, and, and a lot of people have talked about this, that telework is now going to finally have its big moment. Um, I mean, for Pete's sake, you know, the, the Supreme Court is finally changing their standard on telework and uh, taking hearings here in the upcoming session. So, yeah, I do think that Disney is going to be pivoting largely to telework, um, and even in news broadcasting, we're now seeing that TV shows can be produced by remote teams from home. Maybe people don't have to be in D.C. and New York offices five days a week to produce television programming. Um, it's a pretty remarkable shift. In the grand scheme, this is going to hurt so many people not to have work. Uh, yet on the corporate side, it's kind of a reset button for many companies. In the end, will this be good or bad for the American worker? It's hard to foresee a future for me in which this is good for the American worker. My opinion is that we tend to not be ready for crises that you know we should see coming down the road and prepare for. Um, American life tends to move very slow. American government tends to move very slow in response to things. And I think we are in for two years at the least of incredible discomfort um, but the silver lining, again, like we've talked about telework, is that times of radical change, upheaval, and in many cases pain, can unleash innovation and change that we have never before imagined. Stephen Kent, always bringing us interesting stuff and an interesting perspective. Appreciate it. Thanks. I like that note that he ended on. While many jobs are going to go away, it's going to be painful. It's not just the blue collar work. It's also people who had the...